Could you could you say that one more time? I think Skelton will win because he's got more ammunition. Hello and welcome back to the Let's Talk Racing YouTube channel. Myself and Josh here back to preview the Irish Grand National Meeting at Ferry House. A brilliant weekend of action. Uh, there's not that many big National Hunt meetings left this year, so we've got to treasure them. Because I saw the Lincoln last Saturday, and it's a, a sign that the end is nigh, I'm afraid, Josh, for us as the National Hunt fans. So we do have to keep things up. I'm sure you're looking forward to the Irish National yourself. I'm laying my bed for hibernation during the summer. Um, no, I'm looking forward to it big time. It's great racing. And uh, this Aintree and Punchestown are the three that we have to hold on to and treasure. Yeah, exactly. And look, we're starting, we're, we'll be going through the main races of each day. Uh, I think we're going through six races overall. We might give you a selection uh, outside the big races for each day as well. Starting off on Saturday uh, with the Mayor's Chase, the listed Mayor's Chase. And we will want to just preface this video by saying that these uh, selections and our thoughts on them have been pre-decks. So especially with uh, this mare's chase, it's very hard to know who's actually going to run. We've got Ellie May in there, who I assume would be a short price if she did turn up. Mount Ida, the Kim Muir winner, is in there as well. Shattered Love, Scarlet and Dove, an awful lot in there. Josh, I suppose, if Ellie May was to run, do you think she takes all the beating? And if she wasn't to run, who, who would you think is, is sweeping up the pieces? Ellie May's form this season is... is streaked apart from these although Mount Ida is a Cheltenham Festival winner and Chattered Love finished close to Ellie Mae twice. Ellie Mae's form behind Alaho looks rock solid now it looks mega. Mark Walsh if he, if he could have his chance again he maybe would have let Corrivi jump out to the right and, and leave her to it and then try and nick a few lengths on the inside Just saying that in hindsight but I, I think she will be a short price if she does run and I do think she'll win if she does run. The one horse I'll be siding with if she doesn't would be Shattered Love. Yeah, look, I'd agree with Josh there about Ellie May. I think she'd take a whole heap of beating. I just think with the whole Mark Walsh situation, it was very easy for all us armchair jockeys out there to say what, she, what he could have done. I can see what he was trying to do, use her jumping. She was jumping so well. I think Col Reeve is a very good mare. Uh, I think she takes the heap of beating. The one I'd side with if she wasn't uh, there uh, would be actually Scarlet and Dove for Joseph O'Brien. I think she's a very uh, progressive mare. She skipped Cheltenham. Uh, she ran in the graded race that I think they thought Col Reeve was going to run in at Limerick. Uh, instead, she won that very impressively. She won at Navin the time before. I think she's a very progressive horse that may well uh, be able to take this in her stride, especially against horses that have had a fairly hard race at Cheltenham that either mightn't run or have had a hard race and might find it difficult to back up so quickly. On the Saturday is there anything else around the grounds? There's also plenty of good action in England Josh uh, for you to, to get stuck into <laughs> one from the home team and uh, we want to give people winners here. I know the anti-post video a few people were actually saying you were backing things each way. We want winners. We want winners. Um, Saturday we're going to Carlisle for the best bet of the day, and Bird on the Wire in the 2.13. He's, he's sub-100 rated, but Brian Hughes is on a championship uh, battle with Harry Skelton, and uh, I think that he's going to go there and try and notch up a few winners. He's got a great book of rides that day. And Bird on the Wire, second run after a wind-up, uh, finished second last time out with Donald McCain. I think uh, he'll take the world of beating. I'd never think I'd see the day that you'd be putting up a Brian Hughes horse at Carlisle. How times have changed. <laughs> Me on the Harry Compton bandwagon. <laughs> you going in now on Mustard Hughes. What the world is becoming a funny place in lockdown, Josh. Out of curiosity, Skelton or Hughes in the championship? Well, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think Skelton will win, unfortunately. Could you, could you say that one more time? I think Skelton will win because he's got more ammunition, but I still love Brian Hughes. <laughs> and if Brian Hughes was to win, I'd be absolutely smug as a bug on Twitter because everyone's banging on about Skelton. But anyway, we're sidetracking there. Uh, my one would actually come in uh, one of the bumpers at Fairy House. Uh, let's be clear about it for Gavin Cromwell. He's been uh, dancing the dances with both Sir Gerhard and Kilcrut the last two times. Nothing of that stands in this race would have to beat uh, Pat Doyle's flame bearer but I think he's got the ability to do so interesting that he's being kept to bumpers hopefully he will be a good novice hurdle prospect with Gavin Cromwell's horses in good shape We've got an awful lot more to cover on Sunday though starting off with the two mile novices hurdle oh a uh, great two event some nice horses in here that didn't run in the Supreme. A few of my favourites certainly are in there. Josh, anything that uh, caught your eye? Master McShee, is he one of the favourites? Oh, he would be, yeah. One of the two in there, yeah. <laughs> going to be putting him up. 
Well, I'll, I'll be playing the two against my two favourites against the field in this race. I must say, so difficult. <laughs> you got to cover your options. You got to back winners at the end of the day, Josh. You you should know that. That is betting with your heart and not your head. I'm not so convinced about Master McShee. Drill deal. I don't think Ganapathy did that for many favours and. The Devil's Coachman would be the interesting one. The one I like is Cape Gentleman, who finished, uh, who won the Dove Cut, uh, beating a horse of Dan Skelton's called Calico. I was on a Warwick preview evening uh, for Cheltenham, and he said, um, "What what was the the horse that would, you know, grow the Cheltenham funds before on, on the Sunday or the Monday?" And he said Calico, which won at Warwick, went off a very short price. But the ultimate aim with this horse is the Scottish Champion Hurdle, uh, still eight to one anti post. So. A little sort of a, a nugget there. Calico for the Scottish Champion Hurdle. It's been a, a long-term target. Cape Gentleman beat Calico and they finished a seven lengths clear of the third that day. I thought, I thought it was really impressive. And if he, he also entered in the two and a half mile race. Um, so that, that's worth noting. If he runs here, I think that he'll have a massive chance and I think that he could be a slightly bigger price to the, to the likes of a drill deal or the devil's coachman. And Yeah, I'd, I'd have to agree. He, he was very good in the dove cut and I think the time of that race was very good as well. Uh, something to bear in mind for people that do like that sort of stuff. The two I like uh, have been horses I've liked all season. Master McShee is one of them. I would be prepared to give him another chance in grade two company. I thought he was underwhelming at the Dublin Racing Festival. I was expecting him to run a lot better. Uh, but the one I'd, I'd mainly be on in this race is the Devil's Coachman. He was a horse I was really coming round to. I, I thought he'd either go and run very well in the county hurdle if he ran in it, or in the Supreme. I think he actually would have been in the frame in the Supreme, especially the way the race ended up turning out. Uh, they've ended up missing Cheltenham, which may be a, a bit of a blessing in disguise. I think he'd be the main one. I don't know. Very hard to know what type of price you'd get. It probably it all depends on decks with these sort of races. What what price you're going to get? I'd say he'll be near enough the top of the betting, uh, but I, I do think he's a massive chance. Is that a tip in itself? The fact that they bypassed Cheltenham for this? Yeah, I think so. Look, I I when he won the last day at Fairy House, I was or sorry, he won a pun punch of the last day. I was quite keen on him missing Cheltenham initially, because I think he's just a bit of a raw horse that that could develop more and more with time. I'm sure they're looking to boost his ones. He's won four of his five races. I'm sure they're looking for that to be five out of six rather than, you know, posting a note behind it in the county yard or something with him being just too inexperienced. I think he's got a massive chance in this and he's certainly a really nice horse to take forward into next season. Move on to the Mayor's Novices Hurdle, two my four race. We've got your... Uh, next year's uh, Mayor's Novice tip, Glens of Antrim, in this race. <laughs> if she doesn't win it. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure Josh won't be tipping her up. Again, a couple of horses here backing up at, uh, after running in the Mayor's Novice. The likes of Rosie's Hollow near the top of the betting. We do have a bit of betting in for this race. Was Were you going to take something that's run at Cheltenham, or were you going to take maybe a slightly fresher horse? I quite like a fresher horse. Santa Rossa, 8-1 to one each way. A step up in trip. It's a big... Big ass. He ran in a maiden hurdle the last day, and uh, going from a maiden hurdle to a grade one is, is very tricky. But she was third behind the fabulous in an entry bumper, and she finished four lengths behind Corrivi in a Punchestown bumper. So that form has worked out all right this season, um, and uh, only had two runs of the hurdles. Was beaten on her first start, but uh, was very very classy the last day. Um, and I think that she will. I think she'll be very close. I, I think she should be higher up in the betting. I think eight to one is is underestimating her. And if she was trained by a more glamorous trainer, maybe she'd be a, a much shorter price. Yeah, I, I'm agreeing uh, completely with Josh here. I'm really a big fan of Santa Rosa. I thought she'd make up into a really smart novice last year. She had her injury problems after a good bumper campaign. Dermot McLaughlin has doesn't have maybe that many very good horses but the ones he does have he does do very well with and this horse won very very impressively the other week in a maiden hurdle beating Manito Park I think that's pretty strong the way she hit the line would indicate a step up in trip would suit and as Josh says I think she is overpriced probably based off connections the 350 the two mile four grade two novices hurdle we've got a fair lot of dual entries uh, from the two mile race we just covered uh, and and this race Hard to know who's going to turn up where, but I suppose... It, I know you were, at, at the start of the season, very keen on Graham Paradis uh, to potentially run at Cheltenham. Didn't work out that way, but he's turned into a, a very nice horse all the same and probably a similar enough profile to, to the likes of the Devil's Coachman. I really, really like him. If you go back to his, his, his real sort of early form, he won the Fairy House Bumper, which has been won by the likes of uh, Get a Bird on Violin, Eric Bloodaxe, Identity Thief... 
for for those nostalgic viewers and uh, and that that fairy house bumper always seems to produce a very good horse um i did fancy him for the Cheltenham anti post for either the supreme or the ballymore uh, disappointing first run of the hurdles and that was sort of completely scratched from the equation um it was very underwhelming but the last two starts when he's won have been much of what we thought he was very impressive over two miles stepped him up to two miles and five and uh, was very very impressive in the, in the grade three over two and a half it looked like it unlocked another gear in him uh, I do think that he's a stayer in time. He looked like a stayer in his, in his bumper um, from the very start of the season. I thought he would make up into a grade one horse. If this is a stepping stone to, to what he can achieve, it'd be interesting to see what price he is because it is quite a competitive race, especially if the likes of a Cape Gentleman goes here rather than the two mile race. And if I was to pose it to you that both Grand Parody and Cape Gentleman were to run in this race, would you back the two of them? Would you just side with Grand Parody or where would you be going? I'd stick with Grand Parody. I'm pretty confident that he is a grade one horse in time and I think that he, he will win this. Very good. I'd be uh, siding with uh, the Mouse Morris pair. I'm not sure, again, very hard to know with Dex, but I did obviously in our last video put up Gentleman's Game for uh, next year's uh, Brown Advisory Novices Chase. If he was to turn up here, I think he's got a massive chance, even over two and a half miles still think he's got a, an awful lot of class about him that may as kind of get him through maybe this slight drop in trip and the other one to keep the right side of whether it's running in this or later in the season is uh, the jp mcmanus owned get my drift uh, who won at the leopard's day and christmas that's what he won a maiden hurdle there previous to that he finished third in a race uh, behind C. Ducker and Galopin de Champ, actually, uh, earlier in the year. That form looks pretty strong now. I think he's a very nice horse. One, both of those horses will be better next year when a fence is put in front of them. But two to keep the right side of a gentleman's game will probably be shorter. Uh, get my drift if he was to run you'd get a nice each way price which i do you think gentleman's game is just a, a three miler i thought he he, he, should, he obviously won his maiden hurdle over two miles at cork now you could you could certainly argue that was a fairly midland race but i think he's got more speed you, you know the way with, with classy horses at three miles they can take a drop in trip and he only mm. ran over two six at the dublin racing festival ran a very good race behind garda manil yeah, maybe two and a half miles wouldn't be massively in his favour, but I certainly wouldn't put it past him running a massive race, and he certainly wouldn't to, to keep the right side up. I think he's a very, very, a little bit like you're saying with Grand Parody, this horse is a grade one horse, and I'm hoping that class can maybe see him through or perhaps not quite ideal trip. Yeah, hard to know whether he'll run or not. He, he may well stay for the, the three-mile grade one at Punchestown as well. That's also an option. And Mouse Mice just run the one and, and get my drift is the one. But if, if either of them were to run, I certainly would back them. Okay, moving on to the last race we're going to cover on the Saturday. A really intriguing race, the two-and-a-half-mile Novices Chase Grade 1. Based on the betting, it looks like an ergamine, who's unfortunately such a late departure from the Arkle, will have his chance uh, at redemption and winning another Grade 1. We've uh, Leisure's Exhibition, a uh, horse very close to my heart. The steering for Lange is in there as well, Andy Dufresne. A couple of horses that haven't run at Cheltenham as well. Good race. Josh, I suppose, though, if an Ergamine turns up, he takes an awful lot of beating. It's difficult. Latest exhibition, I think, is going to go for the Irish National. Um, so if he's out of the equation, I think he'd be the only danger to Ergamine. Um, it's interesting that they're running him over two and a half miles. Could Alaho drop down to the champion chase and Enigamine turn into the Ryanair horse? Oh, I suppose that could happen, but um, uh, a little bit of a sneak preview of, of the punch stain preview we're, we're probably going to do in two weeks' time. I just can't see Alaho beating Jack and Porsois punch stain over two miles. Yeah, he ran in the Sabbath chase earlier in the year, you know, and they've campaigned him throughout his life as a three mile. And then it finally, you know, um, they dropped him down to two and a half miles. Now they're dropping him down to two miles. It's like Sky Pirate all over again. The Irish Sky Pirate. Probably slightly more classy. Although Sky Pirate isn't a horse you want to be uh, remembering too fondly, that's for sure. Who? I'm like yourself. I'm not sure whether Leisure's Exhibition is going to run in the Irish National or not, but I certainly want him to run in the Irish National uh, rather than this. I know this was the original plan, but uh, we'll, we'll get on to the, the Irish National in time. But Would he not be two to one second favourite very short if he's definitely going to run in this oh 100% he's the only horse that could beat an Ergamine uh, on paper he's got all the rest of them held he'd beat you know he's already beaten the likes of Conflated very easily at Christmas time Andy Dufresne easily in the Dublin Racing Festival I saw an interview with Paul Nolan the other day saying he, he feels he's got the horse in the best state he's got him all year now considering 
he was right up Monkfish's ass uh, at Christmas time in possibly one of the best races of the whole calendar year. Uh, it's right, like he is a very good horse, so he, he would put it up to an ergamine. Hard one to know between the two of them. I, I think latest exhibition would be the only one of these that, that could really, really put it up to him. And I think an ergamine probably goes a probably a one to two, four to seven shot if latest exhibition comes out of the race. Anyway, moving on just at the end of Sunday, is there anything else just throughout all the cards that, uh, you, you know, are you going to tell me again now, Carl Carlisle, Saturday, is it going to be, you know, Exeter now on Sunday or it's, whatever it is? It's not as good as Exeter, it's Hereford. Oh, no. The 421, Dan Skelton runs three horses in it. Whatever Harry rides will win. Uh, very weak race, I'd imagine they'll be fairly fancied and at the head of the market, especially with that battle between Brian Hughes and, and Harry Skelson. Whatever he runs in that race, he, he wins. And one to keep the right side of, I think, is Aramax uh, over in Ferriers. Runs in the big handicap chase at 425. Quite fancy to him, actually, for a, a handicap at the Cheltenham Festival. It didn't work out, didn't end up going, but he's a fresh horse. He's won at the track earlier in the season, beating Port Stanley in a beginner's, and I think he could go well. Moving on to the Monday, and no better place to, to finish all the preview than the Irish National itself. Brilliant race. Again, hard to know. Plenty of in these at the top of the market. Not sure whether they're going to run or not. I'm not sure whether the Tiger Roll is going to go. Uh, you've got, obviously, latest exhibition there that has the Grade 1 entry. Uh, the likes of Run Wild Fred. You know, everyone will know about Run Wild Fred if they've watched these videos, that's for sure. Uh, I suppose, Josh, when I looked at the race, I found it hard to get by the first four or five in the market. And I usually wouldn't. I usually, in, in these types of races, would like to go for something at a big price. I didn't quite see that, but uh, I'd be interested to know what, what your thoughts on it were. Firstly, it's a cracking, cracking Irish national. If they run, Tiger Roll, um, you know, two-time entry winner. Uh, latest exhibition, potential grade one horse. Well, he is a grade one horse. A Sempo, Augusta Gold, home by Lee. I know you are torn between two sons. I've got a feeling you're going to side with latest exhibition if he was to run here. I'm going to side with the other one because as the, as the nice uncle, I've picked him up and, and, and made him feel better. Run wild, Fred. This must have been the plan. He was a, he was a short price favourite for the Kim Muir, um, and he didn't run there. Could you just describe a tiny bit how you're feeling? The worst thing about it was actually the, the, the somewhat glee you seem to get from texting me saying, have you seen the news? As if, kind of, it, it was positive news, as if I was gonna flick onto Twitter and say, and see that, you know, they were rolling the dice with latest exhibition in the RSA, you know, have you seen the news? I go on to, Twitter, I'm, I've got around 20 notifications. The, the news came through. I've never seen anything like it about Run Wild Fred. Everyone's there thinking of Andrew at this time. You know, I've never seen... I got so many mentions on, on Twitter. So I then had to drown my sorrows, put up a tweet of myself with my head in my hands with a stack of beers beside me. It was, a, it was a dreadful evening. And then Time Hill came out the next day. Yeah. The only thing about that was that I knew a couple of people on an ergamine at big prices, and that kind of came between them all. And to be honest, that did make me feel a slightly bit better because people were <laughs> g giving out about that. But no, the Run Wild Fred news really hurt. Because it was, I genuinely, it was around an hour after we'd released our video where I just napped him up. You know, nap of the Cheltenham Festival, Run Wild Fred. An hour later, he's out. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I, I was heartbreaking. I'd actually, well, no, I don't know whether I'd prefer the Intuka situation because at least you know, when you've been nailed, like, as for, I can say, well, I was on the right horse, but he didn't run. <laughs> um, <laughs> neither of them are good situations. Let's just put it that way. Both handicap nightmares for us. Yeah, no, I agree. But run wild, Fred. I'm going to side with here. The form stacks up. He, uh, he was beaten by home by the Lee, who's, who's actually ahead of him in the market. Also, latest exhibition at the start of the season, who's ahead of him in the market, um, albeit didn't lay a glove on them those days. But I think a big handicap at the end of the season has been the plan. I think it is this. He finished second behind Coco Beach in the Thaistes at Gowron the last day, and Coco Beach has come out and won a grade two since. And, and to skip a Cheltenham Festival race, when they, there must be a big plan. I can see this being his last, potentially his last run of the season as well. 
Um, and I see no reason why 10 to 1 at the moment. I think in some places, yeah, it's 10 to 1 general, Labrooks, Coral. I think that's a very good each way bet. I can't see him out of the frame if he gets round. You're telling me, geez, uh, you, you've just repeated everything I said in the Chelsea video. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I think he's got a smashing chance. I will probably back the two of them because I'm, I'm not going to split two sons, you know, like. If, if you had to, you've got to pick one. I, I, I back latest exhibition because I just believe. You just looked at our Duke in this race a couple of years ago when he won it. And very, very rarely with, with a top horse that... I think there's no, no questions asked that Ladies Exhibition's a proper grade one horse. And if he develops into a, a, you know, a, a grade one open chaser next year, he'll be in a mark in the 160s. Somewhere in the 160s. He's going to have one swing at a handicap in his life off a mark of 153. It could be just a, an Irish handicapped gift. To, to the Nolans, really. I think they've got to roll the dice at the big prize. Such a big pot for them to potentially win with a good horse. If he goes and wins it, then, of course, you can go back to grade one. You know, he'll be turning up in the Savills chase next year at Leopardstown and the Irish Gold Cup, all of that good stuff. I think you get a once-in-a-lifetime chance to run off this type of mark in this type of pot, and I'm really hoping he does it. Tiger Roll, I can't see running, personally. Uh, I know there has been money for him, so I could be completely wrong about that. And the one that blows my mind, because I know I love saying wise guys on this channel. It, it's almost becoming a bit like you and Third Time Lucky, like it's... Sempo. Sempo. Exactly. Look, <laughs> the thing I can't understand, and this is egg on the face if Sempo goes and wins. The wise guys have forgotten to see that Sempo cannot jump. He just can't jump. Like, so, you know, it's all well and good taking eight to one about a horse that, you know, in a massive handicap, he's been running in eight runner races and can't jump. What's to say he's going to go down to the first in a 30 runner Irish national and not capsize? Like, if I was going in the Joseph O'Brien camp, I'd be much further on home by the lead than I'd be on Zempo. Yeah. Um, but no, the wise guys have completely sharked in on this horse, and I can't see it myself. He ran, you know, he, he, you know, I know he's been slightly at the jiggery pokery running over two miles when he's never been a two miler, but geez, he'd, he'd want to really, really brush up his jump and to have a chance there. But I think latest exhibition, I know he's right at the top of the mark, but you can still get 7-1 to one if he runs in the race. He's the one horse that, you know, if he's there on the day, I still could see him going off like 7-2. to two. I think there could be money for where people just go in and say he's the class horse, let's hope. You book him out in third or fourth, don't let him get scrummaged in by anything. Give him plenty of daylight, he's a good jumper usually. I think he's got a massive chance. But if he does go to the grade yeah. one, which to a certain extent I wouldn't mind because then I could be all in on my other favourite son, Run Wild Fred, <laughs> um, I, I would be going for him as my second choice. But uh, I think both of them are well handicapped. But they're different types of horses. Look, on, on Monday... Please tell me on, on you know Bank Holiday Monday. There's not you're not going to put up something from you know Wolverhampton on the all weather or something. You're not you're surely going to give me something from art. Yeah, we are. We're going to Fairy House <laughs> in the Grade Two Hurdle and Beacon Edge, who ran fourth in the Stairs Hurdle. I think he's a really progressive horse. I think that he will have his big day over three miles in, in a Grade One next year, uh, next season. Yep, yeah, and I'd be taking you on in the same race with French Dynamite of Mouse Morris's uh, horse that skipped Cheltenham. I think he's a lovely horse. I uh, put him up at the start of the season as a horse to follow. Uh, he would need to polish up his jump at a fair bit, but uh, he is a nice horse. He's a graded type horse and. Just in case the likes of the Beacon Edges and stuff don't run, I think the race could, as you say, cut up quite a lot and he'd have a massive chance. If I was to pin you down to one selection for the whole weekend, so a, a weekend nap that, that the viewers, you know, the viewers have 10 quid left in the Paddy Power account. 10 quid, they need something. They have to back a winner. Who, who are you telling them to back? I'll keep it at Fairy House. Grand Parody. And it'll be latest exhibition for me in the Irish National uh, and if he doesn't run, I am going to save it on Run Wild Fred. So whatever one run, if, if the two of them run latest exhibition, if latest exhibition's in the grade one, then Run Wild Fred, if that makes any sense. 
Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video uh, from myself and Josh. Uh, if, if you have enjoyed it, please do make sure to give it a like. Uh, it's been fantastic, the reception we've gotten on all the videos. And of course, if you're new around here, subscribe to the channel and let us know in the comments down below who your best bets of the weekend are. It should be a great, uh, great card at Fairy House and hopefully we'll see some big winners. And fingers crossed for the big day for the Nolan State. For the Romwell Fred.